Okay, everybody should be in at this point. Oh, cool. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for waiting for some Desmos Activity Builder. My name is Kristen Morales and um, welcome. Hey, one thing you guys need to do, I put it in the chat, is um, you need to get on this uh, slide deck. It's, uh, the link is in the chat or you can just go to a, um, another tab and type in bit.ly forward slash Desmos templates. And that's going to um, get you the, to my slide deck and it's going to get you the links you need that we're going to do while we um, work on uh, some Desmos. Anyways, I hope you're having a great morning. Um, once you guys get in the slide deck on the second page, right, there is a um, sign in sheet that I'd like you guys to sign in. And so that if you can click on that link on the second sheet, um, I've been presenting at R Riverside County Office of uh, Ed Google Summer Camp for many years now. I'm a high school math teacher and tech coach. Um, I also do work uh, with instructional leadership course and that's with Stanford University and CTA. And it's a, a grassroots group of uh, about 200 teachers that over the past five years have provided um, uh, professional development to over 100,000 teachers um, in the past five years. So anyways, uh, Stanford just wants to know that I've connected with at least 75 educators every year. So if you could please sign in on that sign in sheet and at the end I will have a um, an evaluation for you. So um, again, I put the um, link in the chat maybe uh, if steve needs people if people need it again you can watch the chat for me and put that in but again um go ahead and jump on bit.ly desmos templates and go to my sign in sheet um, i trust that everybody's in and i'm going to go ahead and get started and hopefully you filled out that sign in sheet that's really important for my work with instructional leadership core um, i'm going to start with a quick uh, desmos Overview, overview video. So let's go ahead and take a look. Welcome to teacher.desmos.com. At Desmos, our mission is to help every student learn math and love learning math. With that in mind, we've assembled a collection of unique and engaging digital activities. Whether building informal language into academic vocabulary, exploring the relationship between graphs and the situations they represent, or investigating mm. how parameters in an equation affect the graph, you'll find hundreds of activities designed to engage students in mathematically rich tasks in truly delightful ways. And not only that, with the built-in teacher dashboard, you can see student answers in real time, giving you valuable insight for helping individual students and facilitating class-wide discussions. With our featured activities, content bundles, and search features, we make it easy to find just what you're looking for. And best of all, everything you see at teacher.desmos.com is free. Seriously. So sign up, sign in, and start exploring today. All right. So there's just a little overview of Desmos and Desmos activities. Um, and uh, when you're doing um, Desmos, there's a, I have a link to Desmos there. I'm going to talk a little bit today about, um, well, a lot of it about teacher Desmos and how to create activities, and then a little bit about the different calculators and um, where you can learn more about Desmos. Um, so what I'm going to have you guys do, or when you go into Desmos, you can just watch me today, or you can, you know, build along with me. It's really up to you. Um, but if you haven't already created a Desmos teacher account, then you need to go to click right up here is the link for teacherdesmos.com. And I recommend that you um, make an account so that you can start creating your own collections. And um, when I first started using Desmos, what I would do is just use their pre-made um, activities. There's tons of pre-made activities from awesome teachers and some straight from Desmos. And I would just copy and edit or just, just use some of their pre-made templates. Um, and then I started um, learning how to build my own. And what I'm gonna show you guys today is how you can build your own teacher um, activities in Desmos. Um, I want to first invite you to do an activity as a student. So when you're in Desmos, whatever activity you do, you can give students this code and I've linked it right here. So I want you to click where it says click here to join this activity as a student. I want you to click on that 
and walk through the walk through the activity and take just a couple minutes to try it out. Um, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. And then that way I can show you what's happening on the teacher um, dashboard so that you can see um, what it feels like from a student's point of view and then what it feels like from a teacher's point of view. So again, where it says click here to join this activity, you're going to go ahead and join that activity as a student. And you know, don't you don't have to be you know super uh, math teacher smart about it. Just fill out the activity so that we get um, some data. So on my end, while you guys are taking that, um, as you can see, names are starting to come into my teacher dashboard. Now, if I don't want people to, if I want to anonymize it, which I think I will, I'll just anonymize it. And that's a neat feature when you're doing this with your classes. You can have this whether you're teaching remotely or in person. You can have the teacher dashboard up or not. Do whatever you'd like to do. But if you are going to have it up in front of groups of students, I recommend you use this anonymize button. And then on your end, um, I, when I'm teaching um, remotely, what I do is I have my other screen open for students to look at, and I'm looking at this. So I can see the progress of my students. I can see who's on slide number one, who's on slide number two, right? Who's completed it. And it allows me to kind of take a look at what students are doing. So I'm gonna give you just a, you know, a quick, maybe two, three minutes to take a look at each slide. Um, again, don't be too mathematically accurate. Just get the, get the, through the slide so that we can get the data and take a quick look at it. Right, um, and you can see I've tried to include some slides that include, you know, graphs, um, tables, pictures, um, places for you to uh, input your information, right? And then what we're going to do after we get a chance to look at this is we're going to learn how to build this, right? So you can see just some types of questions that you might use in your math class. Um, you know, like a which one doesn't belong. You could maybe start an activity like that and start with some notice and wonder questions. Maybe, um, you know, they have to decide who's right and give them a couple examples of graphs and an equation and see which graph matches the equation. Um, and you can see too, I also included some um, Desmos starter screens um, that help you do some check-in, which I think is really important at any time, but even more important during distance learning to check in and just say, how are you feeling? What are you doing, right? So I can start looking at um, each of the slides. I, mean, I see a couple, most people are on slide three, moving their way to slide four. I'm gonna give you just a couple more minutes, maybe two more minutes to kind of take a look at all the slides and just put in a response so that we can get the data and see what it looks like from a teacher's point of view. To pro tip, uh, when I set up these Desmos activities, I always set up a separate one for each period. I teach high school math. And then that way I can keep, you know, my period two data separate from my period three, period four. Um, so I usually set up a, a separate um, code for each one of my periods. So when you're in the summary view in um, Desmos, it looks like this. Um, and when you start taking a look at how people are doing, you can take a look at one specific student. So if I wanna take a look at one specific student, I can do that and um, see how that student is doing. Um, what just a one student view. Um, and check individual students and how they're doing. I can also take a look um, at, if I look here on slide two, I can see what all of the class is saying. And then we can start a discussion. You know, that was the one with the graphs where we had some lines that look like maybe they were parallel, maybe they're perpendicular. And people are asking, are the lines parallel? Um, there's three lines with a, that intersect one with a negative slope, um, parallel, parallel lines and maybe perpendicular, right? So th just having a question like that, where you throw some graphs up there um, and ask, what do you notice? What do you wonder? Students start using some academic vocabulary and it gives you a chance to um, discuss the actual um, question. So you can see how this could be a tool to start conversations in your class. Right, it's also a check for you as a teacher to say, what do they know? 
right? What's, what's their background information on this, their background knowledge? So I can do that on any question and see who, you know, who thinks Eric was right, who thinks Jenny was right when we're looking at the one with the parabolas. Um, I can take a look at all the different tables that students did and all the different formulas that students came up with. And again, we can have a discussion about, you know, how does that formula relate to the table? And is 5x, 5 plus 2x, is that the same as 2x plus 5? Right? Um, I also really like these, which one doesn't belong questions? Because students, that's a drawing, um, that's a drawing um, uh, slide where they can draw on it. So you can ask students to circle things, to hand draw their graphs. Maybe they put in a, a, a hand drawn math equation. And again, these are all ways to start conversations with your students, right? Um, two, if there's some ones that I want to highlight, I could take some snapshots and I could snapshot, um, you know, this student, maybe this one, and maybe the first four. And then I can go to my snapshots and I can drag these into, I can drag four snapshots of student responses um, into a box and, and present it to the class and show students what the class is thinking. So I can present that as well in the snapshots feature. So, I wanted to go through that for you guys so you can see what it feels like from a student point of view and you as a teacher, how you can take the teacher dashboard and facilitate conversations in your math class. All right. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how you could build something like that. Right. So um, this, I gave you a little video. If you look at the um, slideshow in the Zoom, um, this is a little bit lengthier video. I'm not going to turn it on, but it gives you more in-depth um, background knowledge on how to use snapshots, which I think the snapshots feature is really important so that you can, while students are working in real time, take three, four students' responses at a time and use that to show differences or similarities in their thinking or even sequence the thinking where you may be like a emerging, a beginner in emerging and an advanced response. So it allows you the snapshots to help facilitate conversations. And there's a little video that you can watch on your own and see if you want to learn more about snapshots. Also, notice when I'm in the teacher dashboard, there's all these different symbols like dots, X's, um, check marks, right? I made a little page showing you what, the, what each of those mean right? The dashes mean it's an information only screen. Uh, if it has a check, it means everything's correct. Across means some things are incorrect. And there could be a warning that shows the student doesn't understand it all, or a dot that just means it requires human view to, to kind of grade or, or evaluate. Um, so I'm going to now move into the, to showing you how to build your own Desmos activity. So I'm going to show you this quick video, kind of an introduction to um, Activity Builder. Welcome to a quick overview of the Desmos Activity Builder. To create a new activity, visit teacher.desmos.com and select the custom panel on the side. Next, click New Activity. Can you make that a little louder, Kristen? And then click Start Building. Oh. There are more components to the screen. Here I'll add a graph and a note. Once you've customized your components, consider adding a screen title. Click here to add as many new screens as you need. Throughout authoring, or at the end when you think you're finished, consider previewing the activity from a student's perspective. Once you're happy with your activity results, select the Details tab, enter a description, and then click Done. Now you're ready to launch the activity by creating a class code to share with your students. Or, to share the activity with colleagues, select Share Activity from the Three Dots menu here at the top right. You can find more how-to videos, including resources for creating your own Desmos activities, at learn.desmos.com create. Okay, so now to Desmos Activity Builder. Um, 
as you saw in the video, there's different components. When you're building your activity, you can include any of these components. And probably the ones you're going to use most frequently would be your graph, table, sketch. The sketch is like the one where I had the which one doesn't belong, where you can put an image in there and students can draw on top of there. Um, uh, you can include a video if you want to include a video. You can include a note which and, um, and a place for students to have their input. You can include multiple choice questions. And then there's also card sorts and marble slides. So those are the different when you're setting up a Desmos activity, how you can go about um, setting it up. And then there's lots of starter screens. So up here, anything up here that's underlined is a link. And I put a lot of links throughout the presentation, but Desmos has a lot of really great starter screens and sample graphs, sample tables. And when you're just getting started, or even if you're a pro user, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take one of their samples and I'll use that to start building my activity. So I'll kind of mix and match some of the starter screens and samples that Desmos provides and then build my own lessons there. So there's a bunch of starter screens and then samples of each type of these elements that you would like to use uh, when you're building your own activity. Okay, so let's go ahead and build an activity. Now again, you can build with me or if you just wanna watch what I'm doing and take notes, you can do that too. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. Um, and when you wanna build an activity, once you're in teacher.desmos, you'll go to custom and then new activity. And let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to um, go back to my teacher.desmos and let me get this up. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go to custom and I'm gonna go new activity and I'm gonna call this RCOE um, build. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and get started. And let's see if we can rebuild that activity that you guys did as a student. Now, the robot screen came from the Desmos starter screens. And you could get that in Desmos and, and copy and paste it into your activity. But I'm going to start with the notice and wonder. Remember, you had the notice and wonder um, activity. And so you might start by just putting a quick title on your slide. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include a graph. So here's all of your elements down the side and I wanna include a graph. So I'm gonna click on graph and a graph comes up and I'm gonna to wanna to edit that graph. And if you remember when you did it as a student, it looked like the lines were parallel. Let's get some equations of parallel lines, maybe like y equals 2x. Let's get another one that's parallel to that, like y equals 2x plus three, and um, maybe y, e oops, y equals 2x um, minus four. And then it looked, remember that it looked like there was that one line that looked like it was perpendicular. I'm gonna make it perpendicular by um, having a slope of negative one half um, x plus one. Okay, and that looks pretty good. That's like what we did in the um, session. So now I got done. Okay, I have a graph. Now um, I want to add a note. Now the note section is where you're gonna give students instruction. So you're always gonna have a note there. And my note is, um, what do you wonder? Um, or what do you notice? I'm gonna ask that first. What do you notice? Uh, what do you wonder? Right, so now I have the graph, the note, and then I need to give a place for students to have their input and I can have math input where I ask them to input a math equation or I can have text input. And since this one, I just want them to write about it. I'm going to do a text input and this is going to give students a place to type their response. Now, that looks about what it was, right? That was what you guys saw. And if you just go preview, you can see, oh, okay. That's what it's going to look like for the student. So as you're building, I do recommend that you um, press preview and make sure it looks like what you want. Okay, pretty simple. We built the first slide. Next slide, when you want to add a slide, you just go plus and a new slide comes up 
And um, let's see if we can rebuild that Eric and Jenny slide. Um, and if you recall, that one had a graph. So let's go ahead and get a graph in there. And I'm going to edit the graph. And my graphs uh, that I had on there were y, oops, y equals um, x minus 3. And then you can pull up your Desmos um, keyboard and get your squared in there. And then my other one was y, oops, y equals um, x plus 3 and squared. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I got my two parabolas in there. I press done. And then remember that slide, it had the graph, and then you'd want to put a note. Remember, um, note is where you're going to put your instructions. So pretty much every slide you build is going to have a note. So um, I can say, you know, Eric thinks the blue graph um, matches the equation. Jenny thinks, oops, Jenny thinks, Jenny thinks the red graph matches the equation. Uh, who's right? And now I can put the equation in, but they're down at the bottom in the note, there's a place for you to put an equation. And I could say my equation is y equals x minus 3 squared. Okay. Um, so now I have the graph, I have my instructions in the note, and then I can add, I wanted this to be multiple choice or, or basically choose Eric or Jenny. So that's where I can hit a multiple choice. And my first selection is going to be Eric and then Jenny. Um, and the person who um, graph was correct was Jenny. So I can mark Jenny as correct because it is the red graph that matches that equation, right? And um, then I, after picking the choice, I can ask them to explain their thinking. So I usually leave this box checked because I do want students to explain and to say things like, well, a minus sign moves the graph to the right, a plus sign shifts the graph to the left. I want them to have that conversation, not just a one and done multiple choice, but hey, explain your thinking on the multiple choice. And I usually like to leave this box open because I like to start conversations in my class. So the box where it says show students or classmates responses, I usually leave that there. Again, once you think it looks like you want it, you can press preview and you can say, yeah, I think that looks good. Now, when you do preview it, notice it doesn't um, show the explain your reasoning and you know, see your student classmate responses. Those show up on the student end after they make their multiple choice selection with Eric or Jenny. All right, so that one was pretty easy. Let's try the one with the table. Um, and this one was, remember that problem that you guys were doing about the Maria uh, dog walking. So give it a title. And that one started with a table. So maybe you want to give your students a table of values to take a look at. And you can title, you can just call it X, or you could say X equals the number of dog walks. And I want my Y variable. Y is going to equal the total money earned, right? And then I'm going to start with zero dog walks, one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to jump to 10 dog walks. And notice these are all locked, right? So that way students can't change them. This is part of the table is going to stay there and they'll be filling in this part of the table. So that's how I set up a table for them to fill in, right? Maybe you're learning about functions and you want them to try to establish what's the next um, step in the function. Okay, so we had a table on there. And then we had a note. Now remember your notes are your instructions. So I can say, um, okay, Maria uh, got a dog walking job. 
right? She got a, got five, got five dollars to um, accept the job and then we'll earn two dollars for each dog walk. Okay, complete the table. Complete the table and um, I can say complete the table and um, try and write an equation to represent the situation, right? Okay, so now I have a note, a table, and I gotta give a place for students to give their input. Now, because I'm asking them to write an equation, I have to choose math input so that their input can be in the form of an equation, right? And I can still ask students to explain their answer and I can still show students their classmates response. Again, I can preview it, see what it's gonna look like. There you go, I got my title, I got my little word problem, fill in the table and a place to write what you think the equation is. And I know in math, we do a lot of problems like that. So it's a simple way to see what students are thinking uh, about um, a, a math situation and if they can make that connection between the words, the table, and that equation. Um, so, all right. Um, yeah. Tracy asked, do you unlock the Y so they can change the values? What, what they'll be able in the preview, I, the, because I didn't type anything, they'll be able to type in there, just like you guys were able to when you did the student. So the only thing is it automatically is locked on the stuff that you input. So students can't change what you input. But if you don't put anything, it'll be open for students. Right? Thanks, Steve. Um, okay, the next uh, slide we are looking at is the which one doesn't belong. So put it, go ahead and put a title, title on there. Now remember that one was gonna be where you could draw on it. So maybe you wanna put some images there. Maybe you want students to circle things. Maybe if you're you know, an elementary school student uh, teacher, you have pictures of money and they circle groups of, of money to count up how much equals $1.49. You know, maybe you have pictures of geometry where you want them to circle all the quadrilaterals or things like that. So that's where it's really um, great to put a sketch in here. Now, when you put a sketch, it can just be a plain white sheet of paper or you could um, customize your sketch, right? Um, with a background, I can, I can um, add an image by dragging it here or clicking to upload. So, or if you want to use graph paper. So I had an image like a, which one wouldn't, didn't belong image. I can just drag it in there like that. Um, I'm gonna put custom image. I'm gonna go get my custom image, which is right here. Okay, so now I have my custom image for which one doesn't belong, right? And um, I'm going to move this over. Okay, so and then I want to say, okay, I got my sketch and or my custom background. If you want it, then you can go ahead and put a note. And again, your note's always going to be your instructions. And you could say which one doesn't belong. You know, um, I could say circle, uh, circle your choice and explain your reasoning. Right, so I have my note and then my input, I wanna go ahead and choose text input so students can um, type up why they circled what they circled. Um, and show the, uh, the rest of their classes their response. Again, if you preview it, it's going to look like this. Notice there's going to be all these pen tools for students to draw on, right? They can draw lines. So this is a really fabulous tool, especially if you have, you know, um, images of, 
graphs, uh, geometry figures, um, equations. Maybe you're equi you could use even something from the Which One Doesn't Belong website, but really great tool. And you can see now I've basically uh, created the slideshow that you guys did, and it was pretty simple. So it's, um, you can make um, uh, small activities, warm up activities, um, things that you wanna do. And the last thing you'd wanna do is you'd wanna publish it and give it a name, right? We're already calling it R RCOE, right? Um, build, and now you have it, right? So if you wanted to do that with your class, you would just create a class code and what you could do is you click on these three little dots and the student link. So what I do is I typically take this link right here, just where it says copy, and I copy that and I put it right into um, Google Classroom, right? If you didn't wanna do it that way, you can actually just bring it up on your screen like this and while you're teaching synchronously with your students, say, hey everybody, open up a new tab and go to student.desmos.com and type in the code. So that's another way. So it kind of depends on you if you wanna preload your Google Classroom with the code um, or if you wanna do it live. Another thing I've done too is I've done this for independent work where students, I give them the code in Google Classroom and I say, hey, you need to work on this for homework and I'm gonna check on it. We're gonna, as a class, go over it tomorrow. So that's another idea you could do with students is you could um, assign it ahead of time. And then the next day when you're doing synchronous learning or in face-to-face -face learning, have class discussion. So um, either way is a great, great way to um, take a look at uh, Desmos Activity Builder, right? Um, I also want to um, talk about some other activities that you guys could do. Um, Desmos has a new beta, which is a, a beta feature, which is um, in Desmos Labs where you can give written feedback. I put, included a little video for that if you want to give written feedback to the students after they do their work. Um, and then as I mentioned, when I first started using Desmos, and I still um, use this, I use the pre-made collections. So I have here for you guys collections for all different levels of um, math that you can just click on any one of these. These are all linked to different activities that might be great for your grade level. Um, I teach high school geometry and pre-calculus. And two, especially with geometry, because that's a strand that they teach all the way through elementary into middle school and culminates in high school geometry. Sometimes I find great activities in other grade levels. Um, so here's a ton of uh, pre-made activities that you could just start and use and um, uh, engage your class. I also highly recommend that you start using the Desmos calculators. Up here, I have the link to the four function calculator, the scientific calculator, and um, the, the graphing calculator, and they look like this. Um, these are the tests, these are the, the calculators that are used on all the CASP tests. So why not start embedding those? What I like to do is I like to embed these links into HyperDocs. I you have a daily HyperDoc, or really any um, worksheet that I'm doing with students, I, I, build, I basically build everything in, in Google, and then I will include this link. So if there's an activity that I want students to, to use a calculator, I give them these links so that they can actually use the calculator that they're gonna need to be able to use for task testing, and it's definitely a free, high-level, high-grade quality calculator that you should be using all the time in your students, whether it's younger grades, you know, scientific, or graphing. Um, so there's also the link here if you wanna learn more about Desmos, there's the link to learn more. And I wanted to share with you guys a couple other activities in addition to Desmos. Um, I'm a big fan of Edu Protocols. I do a lot of work with Q and um, at Q Conference and John Carippo and Marlena Hedbrin uh, wrote these fabulous two books that are called Edu Protocols. Um, 
and there's some really neat protocols you could do in your class to get other um, synchronous independent activities that you could do with your students. So one of them is called Sketch and Tell. Sketch and Tell is this activity. I have all the instructions here for you, um, but it's basically a, an activity, if I could click on it, um, about using the, the Google tools to draw and create their own sketches that in, it does this, in this activity, you would not allow them to bring in Google images. They'd have to draw it themselves. And um, you get, ask them to use lines, curves, or even the scribble tool. The scribble tool is a tool that they can actually draw on a Google slide or, or circle things, right? And then uh, you co copy two slides per student and um, they add it to a shared slide deck. So you can give each student you know, a topic, maybe your topic is parallel lines and transversals. They can come on their sketch and tell slide and maybe sketch a picture of parallel lines and transversals with maybe one angle in there and then talk about what angles are congruent to each other? You know, what, what are our same side interior angles, our corresponding angles, maybe find missing parts where they can create their own math problem and, and talk about it. So sketch and tell is a really fun activity for you to throw a topic at, a, at your class, have students create slides, and you can create enough of these slides for each student in your class to jump on a slide and create problems and then talk to the class about what they created. Um, another really great activity that's an edu protocol is Iron Chef. Iron Chef looks like this. Um, there's different templates that you can include if you don't like the one with the flame, but it's based after the Iron Chef TV cooking show where you create your groups of four, you share this slide deck with four students, your group of four, and each student gets their own slide to work on. And the key here is time is of the essence. You give this to them, you share it to the, the, the group at the start of class, and you literally only give them 10 minutes to build. You give them a topic, and the students then have 10 minutes to build, and then when the time is up, they gotta be ready to present their slideshow to the class. You can even, and the slide, the presentations will be one to two minutes uh, for each student. So in a regular, you know, hour long class, only 10 minutes is spent to building and 50 minutes is spent to having your groups present. If you have 10 groups, that'd be four to five minutes for each group to present. So each student would have about a minute to present their slide. And the thing about um, Iron Chef is they always had a secret sauce. The secret sauce is for your fast finishers. So you would ask students to create um, a, a picture here, a, an image, and then write about it, solve the math problem. And then a secret sauce, what I like to use for secret sauce is I give them a link to a GeoGebra activity or a GeoGebra applet and say, how could you extend that topic, right? So that's some other ideas for you guys um, for different ways you can use Google Slideshows with um, activities in your classroom. And your secret sauce could be Desmos too. You could tell them, here's a link to a Desmos graph to play around with or create a Desmos graph, right? Um, I also included here, would you rather choice boards? Um, I like, I'm a big fan of choice and whatever your topic is, maybe your topic is graphing families of function. You can ask students maybe each week, create different types of media to show what they're learning. Maybe a screencast or an infographic, right? Create a song or a skit. So you could kind of mix and match these would you rather slides to create, to set students up to create different media to show and showcase what they learned each week. Last thing I wanna mention is math reps. Math reps um, is something I'm gonna do in my next session and show you how to use quizzes to really support math reps. But my good friend, Lisa Nowakowski uh, and Jeremiah Roosh, uh, started this math reps and it's a part of the edu protocols book and there's math reps for all different levels these are when those skills that you want to repeat kind of and do over and over again but it's more than just a one one and done skill it connects multiple skills so for example if you were in elementary and you you're learning about fractions well fractions are related to decimals and those are related to scientific notation 
right? Let's not teach those in isolation. Let's get them in a math rep that asks, asks, asks them to connect all these topics. So an example of the one of the ones I contributed was a high school when I was doing pre-calc last year, and I'm gonna do it this year. Unit circle is so important. Um, so I had a math rep, a daily math rep, where I changed the angle, right? And I would ask them to find the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, and I changed the angle every day. And students' work look like this. I started them out with degrees, and we every day get a new angle, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, right? And then as soon as they got good with degrees, then I switched them over to uh, radians. So um, other teachers in my department were doing time tests. I was doing math reps, and my students got real good because every day they were connecting you know, all the elements of the unit circle in a rep. And it, so that's what math reps is, and it's another template you can use. So um, I hope you guys got some great ideas. Here's some how's math reps uh, match, match up and edu protocols from the book if you're interested, match up with math, the math practices, the eight mathematical practices. And there's some more website here that my friend Jeremiah put together with more math edu protocols. Um, I really need, uh, would like you to fill out the evaluation form. And that's on the last slide. Again, my work with instructional leadership cores, myself and a group of about 200 teachers statewide with the support of Stanford University and California Teachers Association, we've provided professional development to over 100,000 teachers in the past six years. Um, and it's by meeting people like you. And I just need to show Stanford that I actually talked to you today and I would like a little bit of feedback so I can make my presentations better. So if you could please um, include that um, evaluation. Steve just put it in the chat. Thank you, Steve. It's also on that last slide. Um, and yeah. Hi, Kristen. Uh, there, yeah. was, there was a question that asked, uh, do students have to have a, an account with Desmos or can they just use the link you provide? Oh, just use the link, no account required. Yeah, it's very simple and it's all free. I also wanna show you guys too, um, I put a link to a, my teacher website that has a lot of my recent presentations in there, plus other resources and tips and things that I use. So you're welcome to go visit my bit.ly techie teacher website and see um, some of the other things that I've been doing. Um, and I wanna open it up for a few questions if people have it. Um, I wanna be re very respectful of your time. I know it's almost 1020, um, but if there's any closing questions I can answer, please let me know. Okay. I did give you permission to unmute yourself if you want to speak or you can use the chat. And uh, we have just about uh, one minute left, so. Okay. And I'm putting the link for the whole slideshow back in the chat too. I think most people got it, but I think one person said she arrived late. Um, Okay, so wait, Marlena, the, so the question, so the feedback form, let me get you the feedback form link. Um, the feedback form link. Christian, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I noticed that when you were showing us the, the Desmos um, slides and then you showed us um, how students uh, were responding to those questions from the um, comment box, um, how do you see their names? How do you know which students respond to what if they don't have an account with Desmos? Okay. Um, and so, their names still appear on the, the um, response box. Okay, so when I go to my collections, right? So I'll go to my collections um, and I pull up the activity that we just did, uh -huh. which was this one. So I know the one that we just did was this one. I go, it was, and I view the dashboard. And then here on the dashboard for every assignment, I, I anonymized you guys, but if I take the anonymous off, see there's everybody's names. So as automatic, the names would appear on, on the- um, On the dashboard. 
on the dashboard, it would be automatic. You don't have to generate it? No. No, and I always tell students to sign in with their first and last name. See, like Gordon just wrote Gordon. Granted, I, I don't have very many Gordons. I can probably figure out who that is. But I get students in the, the habit of signing in with their first and last name so that I know who it is. So, so they're signing in to Google Classroom with the first and last name? Or do they no. sign in to Desmos with the first and last name? So remember the link I gave you at the beginning? Uh -huh. um, so when we are on, I think it was like around here, this slide. When you clicked on this, right here as a student it asks you do you want to continue as Kristen Morales because I'm already signed into Google oh yeah. I see so they okay. have to sign they have to sign in there well thank you so much Kristen we are already over time so we're going to have to end the session but uh, okay. I learned a lot and I appreciate yeah. you uh, uh, sharing your information so okay thank all you right. everyone and uh, we'll see you in the next session all right thank all right. you Take care. thank you all right bye-bye mm -hmm.